Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. We here in Kansas City are experiencing snow today, and the forecast is for us to probably get somewhere between six and eight inches by the time this storm is all said and done, which is a significant snowstorm. And we don't get those nearly like we used to um, here in recent years. So uh, we get a lot of questions whenever it snows, and, and a lot of it has to do with why do this bird activity pick up and why is it so extreme? Why do the birds come out of everywhere? They just show up and they're eating me out of house and home. And why is that? Why when it snows? Uh, and some of that, of course, is, is pretty common sense. And, and uh, there, so there, there are some other factors there too. So I thought I would tie in, you know, birds and, and how they survive cold weather with that, with, with the stress, because that is the number one word when we're talking about birds and bird activity being at such a, a high point whenever uh, you got you get a good snow in. So stress. Um, birds are warm blooded, like you and I, like mammals. So birds can find uh, if they can find food, they can they can make internal body heat, like you and I. When we eat food, that gets converted to body heat, and we of course have a body temperature of ninety eight. 0.6 degrees and, uh, on a normal basis. And birds, uh, songbirds in particular, have a, a body heat of about 105. So um, they are able to uh, withstand some cold temperatures just because of that fact alone. But they have to be able to find food. And if you are a regular follower and you watch me, you know I talk about the old food, water, and shelter scenario. Those three things are critical for all animals to survive. And when it when the world gets covered up in snow and ice, like we're getting experiencing right now, stress goes way up. Whenever it's nice and warm, and there is plenty of open space, and uh, there there's not a lot of pressure on you to to find food, you can take your time, find food, you, your body heat is easy to reach and maintain, and, uh, and 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 that's great. But when you are stressed by cold temperatures, uh, cut food cover, being covered by snow and ice, then your job's a lot harder. You've got to, uh, you go into survival mode and you work harder to find food. So when feeders get really busy because the easy food, the less stressful foods are now all covered up or most of them are covered up. So they have to travel longer distances and to, to find available food. And when you're traveling and flying, flying is very expensive and, and it burns a lot of calories and uh, you're using up that, that food that you're able to find. So bird feeders become really important to wild birds whenever you're getting storms, snows and uh, extreme cold temperatures, things like that. Uh, birds have to... Uh, have that consistent food source a lot of times to survive that. And yes, this is the time when your bird feeding, uh, it really truly impacts the survival, uh, survivorship of a lot of birds. And most of the time we're feeding birds, it's really for our pleasure because we love to see them and they love to come in. But we know that birds only get about 15% of their daily diet from bird feeders. So it's not like, you know, if you took your bird feeder away from them, you know, they would die. And really cold temperatures, like now, if they, if you take your bird feed, your feed away from them all of a sudden, and there are no other uh, bird food sources close by, then you could negatively impact them. They they could be harmed by that all of a sudden uh, absence of food that you've been providing. And this is not to be a guilt trip. I'm not trying to you know to say hey you got to keep feeding birds. No, uh, they'll find food. It's just a much you really do help them pro by providing a dependable source of food when conditions are harsh and and uh, they're, they're getting your whole world covered by snow. And, and I think. You know, you realize that there are certain species that really come into your feeders whenever uh, there you have snow. And those are a lot of times are the ground feeders, the birds that prefer to get their seed off of the ground or they regularly get their seed off the ground. Cardinals are famous for it. Uh, they you know, for really showing up in huge numbers with, in snowstorms. Uh, juncos and, and white throated sparrows, white crown sparrows. The night the sparrows are ground feeding birds. Morning doves are ground feeding birds. And so whenever their world gets covered up with snow, then they look for those easy sources. And so your bird feeders get really uh, heavily visited by them. Now, they also, uh, the time of day, you know, we talked about them being able to make their own body heat. 
Well, how about those long stretches when the sun goes down till the sun comes up the next morning? That's one of the reasons why you see feeders so busy at, at dusk. You know, about an hour before sunset, uh, birds come in and they heat very heavy because they have to have enough food in them, enough body heat to survive a cold winter night. Uh, they have different techniques that they use to, to do that. They, they fluff their feathers, and this is true with heat and also with cold. They, by fluffing your feathers, you're creating an extra insulation uh, layer with your feathers fluffed up. There, there, there's air space in there, and that acts as a, an insulation against cold and also against heat. In the summer, they do the same thing. They fluff in the summer, but they fluff in the winter. They can also shiver, uh, which, of course, burns energy, but it also generates heat for them. Um, it, but the most important thing is for them to get enough food so their bodies can produce that body heat. And of course, they can lower their body temperatures at night when they're they're not as active. But they they really have to have that food. Water, of course, goes without saying. If you again, if you're a regular viewer, you know I talk about water and how important it is all the time. They have to have that unfrozen water. And studies show that Project Feeder Watch I talk about a lot, the Great Backyard Bird Count, and of course breeding bird surveys in the spring, things that that we do to to monitor birds show us that a lot of times in urban areas where there are bird feeders and there are uh, bird uh, heated bird baths for birds, we see a survivorship higher in urban areas than we do out in rural areas where those uh, can be hard to find in harsh stretches of weather. So things like Carolina wrens, they tend to do better in, in really harsh winters in urban areas because of unfrozen water and uh, sources of food that they can find. And a lot of these birds depend on, you know, uh, finding insects that are overwintering under bark and things like that. Well, your sources of soot and peanut butter and cornmeal and sunflower chips and things like that, that some of these birds that classically eat insects can subsidize uh, at bird feeder stations. And it's really important for them to survive. So say, like I said, it, it's a partial, you know, yeah, yeah, it, it's cold. So you need food uh, and bird feeders are that great source of food for our feathered friends. So why do bird why do feeders get so busy and when it snows? Stress. And you guys are a huge help to them. Uh, make sure you provide, uh, you know, your regular food sources. Some people only feed suet during the really cold stretches. Some people only mix up a good peanut butter and cornmeal mixture whenever it's really cold, things like that. There's, there's, there's ways you can provide extra energy for them, but make sure you do provide some kind of food source. Black oil, sunflower, good seed mixes. Uh, those are all so important to them and help them get through these really harsh stretches like we're having right now. So, Thanks for tuning in. Give us a like if you would. Give us a share. You know what? If you send in ideas, things you want me to talk about, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, and as I always say, come by and let's talk birds.